Let's think about the last time you were on the road. Of all the trucks and vans you saw, about 40% was not full. And of those, several were empty. And then let's think about the last time you ordered something online. Were you at home when the delivery man was at your doorstep? Well, in half of the cases, the first delivery attempt is not successful. And of the successful deliveries, uh, 6 to 18% you return. So even those full trucks are not driving that efficiently, apparently. Now let's think about the logistics in the, ne in the next few years. Ever-increasing cargo flows, ever-increasing e-commerce, distribution through our cities. How do we make sure that we will have avocados on the shelves in those years? Well, luckily, there are a lot of academics specialized in logistics working on today's and tomorrow, tomorrow's problems. They study all kinds of different variants. They try to make it practical to see if we can make logistics more efficient, functioning uh, in a better way. I know about this because I was doing my PhD in logistics in the past few years, but I'm afraid they're not always doing the right thing. For instance, the other day I was reading a study that was specifically aimed at solving the problem of routing electric vehicles through a city, uh, making several deliveries. Such a problem with electric vehicles is slightly different from the regular problem because those electric vehicles, they need recharging every once in a while. And they can't do it at every stop, but only at certain stops. And at the same time, just like today, they have to adhere to time windows for each delivery. So this is what they call the electric vehicle routing problem with time windows. EVRPTW, they say then. Sounds pretty applied, doesn't it? But they didn't take into account congestion, weather conditions, or the temperature of that avocado that needed to be delivered. And besides, they could only solve it up to 10 deliveries in that city. Not very much for a practical case. So our avocado, avocado problem isn't solved um, very well by the academics nowadays. How come they are still in the stores then? Well, for that we have to look at the thousands of logistics workers that do their job every day. I know about them because while I was doing my research, I was working in a company uh, with several of these people. I was having my desk next to them, and I saw them solving logistics issues on the roads, on the rail tracks, every day. It was fascinating to see, and someday they even allowed me to join in. I was allowed to make part of the puzzle of that company, and I felt terrific. Everything I wanted as a kid, I could do there. Assigning cargoes to trucks and trains, fantastic. I went home feeling great. I made logistics work that day. Until I came home, uh, uh, until I came back uh, about two days later, and the guys, they were laughing at me and said, nice try, Bart, but we spent two days fixing your mess. <laughs> so much for my efforts there. But they, the, these guys, they laughed at it, and they said, well, this is our job, right? They were solving the issues on the roads and the rail tracks, and I just hope that uh, some people got their avocados that day as well. So, um, logistics workers, they solve most of the issues today. But I'm afraid their job is about to get a lot more difficult in the next years. So because of these ever-increasing cargo flows, because of digitalization, logistics flows become much more intertwined. And we as customers, we have ever higher standards for on-time delivery and reliability. So it's not sufficient to just look at the next stop in the chain, like they used to do nowadays. Now we need a systematic approach, and that's where companies typically bring in models, automation, systems. Well, it may be a good solution, but also there things go wrong. In another place, another time, I was again working with one of these logist logistics workers, and we found out that he was keeping away 20% of capacity away from the system. So why did he do that? Why did he keep 20% of the capacity out of the system? Well, he was working already for 20 years for one of the main customers, and he knew that every once in a while they had a big order coming in at the end of the day. Well, and then he could save the day by having that capacity available. On the other days, that capacity was wasted. So not a very systematic approach, but at the same time, the system couldn't deal with such incidental orders coming in every once in a while. So we need 
to make a bridge here. We need to fix those two worlds and bring them together. We need systems that don't lose the human touch. But still, we need th those systems to make logistics work. So let's make logistics research work in practice. Oh, what does work then? If we make the academic specialists and the expert from practice cooperate, then they can really learn. The specialists, they can learn what's not in the models. They can learn what's on the mind of the planners over lunch breaks, and they can see what really matters. So why doesn't this happen more often then? Again, in another time, another place. I was at a log logistics conference dedicated to bringing academia and business together. And one of the keynote speakers, he asked to the audience, about 400 people, who of you studied logistics? So I raised my hand together with three others. So apparently, our logistics specialists go somewhere else. They go into finance, they go into venture capitalists. We lose them in the real world, where we need them to make society continue to function, to have the goods or the avocados on the shelves. So let's make logistics research work in practice. First, we need to find the right people. People with a mind for puzzles, people with a bright mind. People that like to go out in the real world and look at issues that really matter. Then secondly, we need, we need, to do, we need them to do the right thing. We need them with the boots on the ground, working with the people that do the daily job and learn what really matters and what's not in the systems and what's not in the models currently. And then, if they've done that, they can probably create a nice model, including all these things, and we throw away that model, but we keep the process in place of that working together. How the specialists from academia, the specialists that were trained, work together with the experts, because that's where the real knowledge was created. That's where we learn how we can make logistics work. So if we do all that, if we find the right people, if we can get them to do the right thing, we throw away their model, but keep the process in place, then I'm sure that in the future, we can have our avocados pre-peeled, pre-seasoned, and pre-cut, just ready to eat when you want it. Enjoy. <laughs>